Not too long ago, I made a video titled, How many times is Swim Form needed to beat Splatoon 3? In this video, I tried to find out the minimum amount of time Swim Form was needed to beat Splatoon 3 start to finish. However, this does not include most of the levels from the campaign, meaning we still need to complete the majority of levels to fully complete this game. If you haven't seen part 1 of this challenge, you can click on the card on the top right of the screen or check the description. This is a part 2, so I will be adding on to our final score from part 1. For the people who don't know the rules or have forgotten, Anytime we're in swim form, I'll add a point to our final counter. We can be in squid form for as long as we'd like, and it'll only count as one squid until we go back into kid form. There are some exceptions, however. When you try to enter a kettle, an animation plays with your squid shaking around. We cannot do anything during this animation, so it'll be put in the animation squid transformation category, which obviously doesn't count towards our counter. Launch pads also count towards the animation squid transformations, but we do have to be right on top of them for it to not count. There's another exception we have. Sometimes we might find an ink cannon or these binoculars that we have to press ZL to use. These do make you turn into a squid, but you can't really do anything as a squid, so it's kind of like a pseudo swim form type deal, which I also won't count towards our counter. I will also be calling swim form squid form throughout the duration of this video since it's just much easier to say. As I said in the intro, there are a few levels we already played in our last video. These levels most likely didn't have any cool strategies to complete, and I'll name them when I reach their section in Alterna. But for now, let's start off with section 1. Last video we completed Zip, Splat, and Jump, What Caused the Big Bang, You, The Strings the Thing, and Deadly Dance Hall Jump Jump, which means we still have to complete 6 levels in section 1 of Alterna. Let's start with Get to Know Alterna, Your Only Choice. This level starts off with a ride rail bringing you over to this open area. In this open area, we can see 3 sections that all contain keys. One of these requires an ink rail, another one requires an ink furler, and the last one requires you to climb up this moving block. It may seem like we might need to use squid form three times already in the first level, but one thing that's easily overlooked is that any time we're using the hero shot during story mode, we have access to the splashdown special. You might be thinking, how is this important in any way? Well, you could actually gain a height higher than your normal jump with the splashdown. This means that if we go over to this moving block, we can use our splashdown to get on top of it. After getting to the top of this block, we see a squeegee on this wall. And since post Splatoon 1 squeegees are a little bit thick, we can stand on top of them to climb all the way up this wall to reach our first key. Let's try out the ink furler section now. I decided to take out the enemies before I went up there, and I also inked this sponge to reach the area. This ink furler looks like it would require a squid transformation, but I thought our trusty splashdown might just do the trick. I used my splashdown and was unfortunately met with instant failure, since the furler activated the second I pounded the ground. I tried to Again, but this time I was able to jump off the ink furler before it activated. This means that I might be able to jump far enough to actually reach the top platform, but it would probably be pretty difficult. I tried again, and I was actually able to jump on top of the ink furler to reach the top platform and grab our second key. I couldn't really think of anything smart to get our third key, so that's going to require one squid. Now all that's left to do is unlock these boxes with our keys, and... Oh, this might be a small issue. The second key unlocks an ink furler, and this time our splashdown will not save us since this ink furler starts out on the bottom platform. But this isn't over yet. The first box we unlocked contained an ink gusher, right? Well, from experience, we know for a fact that these ink gushers can provide us with an unreal amount of momentum. This means that we can use this ink gusher to get on top of this box and jump over to the next locked box. I will not lie, this took forever to complete, and I'm really surprised that this is actually possible. One squid transformation was needed throughout this first level. Our next level is octopods at rest tend to flip out. We need to grab a key to unlock this box, and the key we're looking for isn't very difficult to collect. The box that we can open shows us a wall that we'll need to climb up to progress, and right after we climb up this wall, we'll need to climb up two more walls to reach the end. Thankfully, we can climb up both of these walls for the price of one squid. Splatio on the flip side is up next, and this level's actually pretty straightforward. We didn't really have any issues, and we could actually just walk past some of the enemies in our way. Doors, 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 and more doors is next on our list. 
And I was pretty scared for this one, since we would normally have to climb up a few walls to actually complete this level the normal way. I grabbed the first key by climbing up this wall using one squid, and when I opened the locked area, I decided to go ahead to the final section where we can unlock the two halves of this bridge. We would normally have to collect some more keys to get an angle on some splat switches on the side of this final section, but we could actually just throw a burst bomb at the side to activate the splat switch. We could do this trick once more to activate a second splat switch and reach the goal with one squid. Relic Restoration is up next, and for this level we have to paint this Easter Island head, but since it's really tall, we get provided with some platforms after painting 20%. Unfortunately, these platforms are kind of out of our reach, so I had to think of something that might possibly fix this. I found out pretty quickly that these platforms actually slide from right under the head, and we might actually be able to jump right on one if we're lucky enough. I threw a burst bomb at the head, and I immediately ran towards one of the platforms. I jumped off the edge hoping it was fast enough to catch me, and it was way faster than I thought it would be. We can paint the rest of the head after this, and complete the level with zero squids needed. Our final level for section 1 of Alterna is called Become One with Your Small Fry, and for this level we're going to have to utilize the power of Small Fry. This guy is pretty useful when it comes to gradual damage, since he'll be stuck on anything you throw him on for quite a while. The final section of this level has some wheels that'll spin if you attach Small fry to their designated ink switch. However, we still do have to climb up this wall using squid form to progress. There's also a boost panel on this wall that we'll also need to use a squid transformation to use. Two squids were needed. Now we're on to section 2 of Alterna, and the only level that I played in the previous video was splitting crosshairs. So we have a few levels left to play for this section. Our first level is called Twirling Swirling Whirling, and we have to move along these spinning platforms that contain enemies. It's not very difficult to complete, but we do have to climb up this wall at the very start of the level. Absorbency and U was our next level, and we already find ourselves in a bit of a situation at the very start of this level. Sometimes we might find ourselves unable to make certain jumps, but since this is a sponge we're talking about, we might actually be able to splash down onto it while it's growing. I decided to try to fill up my splashdown meter, but we didn't really have enough inkable ground to do so. Then I remembered that in Turf War, we don't lose all of our special charge when we get splatted. This gave me the brilliant idea that the same thing might work for story mode, and yeah, it did. Now we can let the sponge grow and splash down right on top of it. We can do this same exact trick a few other times to reach the goal with a total of zero squids. Soak It To Me is up next, and this level will require us to use some soaker blocks. There's a a few areas where we'll need to stand on top of these soaker blocks so they can build a path for us, but in some other areas we don't really get that same luxury. This level isn't too difficult, but it does require one squid. Tread Heavily is our next level, and we get to play as a crab tank for this one. The ball form for the crab tank counts towards our pseudo squid rules, so this level is possible without squid form. Our next level is going to teach us about getting lost in three easy steps. The first part has us go through this maze, but we also have to make sure we ink the way we're walking so we don't lose our path back. Because we're definitely going to need it once we use squid form one time to climb this wall and hit this switch that flips the maze around vertically, making us have to climb all the way up to the top of the maze to reach the goal of the level. One squid was needed. The ink conservation project was our next level, and we were tasked with completing this level with a very limited supply of ink. This is a pretty short level, but we do have to use one squid to climb up this short ledge and this ink gusher. Switching things up, for our final level in the second section of Alterna, has us ink some of these splat switches so we can build a wall that we'll eventually need to climb up up to reach the goal. So that's clearly one squid, but in the first half of the level we will need to drop down to this area that shows us a wall that we'll need to climb up to get to the second half of the level. Two squids were needed. Section 3 of Alterna is our next stop, and the levels we completed last time includes Alterna's 11th most popular sport and time trials and errors. I'm pretty sure I didn't showcase the time trial level in last video, but it's clearly possible since we just have to pop some balloons within a not so strict time limit. Climbing the corporate splatter. Oh boy, this does not look good for us already. Our job for this level is to use these boost panels to reach the end of this level, but one problem about these boost panels happens to be that we can't use them unless we're in squid form. So that's going to be one, two, and three squids needed to complete this very, very short level. They said we'd have flying cars, and we do, kind of, is our next level with a really long name. It's a perfectly fine level until we reach this wall that we'll need to use squid form to climb. 
We can prepare for our next move by throwing this spot bomb over the wall before we climb up, since there's a large gap shortly after climbing this wall and we can use the ink from the splat bomb to cross. Our next challenge is actually getting on top of these octo zeppelins, and this was pretty challenging since we didn't really have enough height to reach the top unless we used our splashdown. I successfully got on one of the wings after using the splashdown, but now we have a slightly different problem that you can clearly see as we're approaching death. I thought of maybe jumping on these boxes so I can gain just enough height to reach the wing, but the octo zeppelin would explode from the impact. But then I remembered in level 1, we had a very similar situation with this ink furler. So I tried jumping off the octo zeppelin right once I came into contact with it, and I was barely able to make it to this platform. But the rest of this level was pretty easy, resulting in one squid needed to complete it. Ink Wheels Experience Tomorrow's Technology Today is our next level, and last video I said that we can get over these soaker blocks by using a splashdown. But right after, we find ourselves at a very interesting stop, since all the items we were supposed to see here have disappeared mysteriously. I found that just waiting a short while on the area before this broken section, we can load in all of the elements and complete that area pretty easily. Shortly after, we do have to climb up this wall, followed by a soaker block wall starting from a top platform. This level's pretty straightforward after that, but we did have to use two squid transformations to complete this level. Conveyor belt tightening was up next, and this seemed impossible at first, since I thought the ink brush would be the most optimal weapon of choice until I got completely destroyed by these boxes. The bucket clearly showed that this was not the case. Zero squids. Rail Pass was our final level to complete for World 3, and just by looking at this first section, I just don't think I like it quite much. The first three ink rails we encounter each require a squid to get past unfortunately, but at least we can save one squid transformation in the middle section of the level by tossing our splat bomb all the way to the top of this platform. Six squids were needed to complete this level. Now we're on to our next section of Alterna, and last time we completed the levels, the path to perfect penmanship, amusing a bemused muse, and those aren't birds. There were also two levels that weren't showcased in the video, and they were easy ride tricky targets and the ink fast hotshot, but they didn't really have any areas that squid form would be useful for. Propeller to Greatness was our first level for this section, and it immediately presented us with a wall that we'll need to climb. After that, we'll need to use these propellers to reach yet another wall. The rest of the level wasn't very difficult since we already know our splashdown strats. Two squids. Octohoppers don't have a sense of humor. This level gives us four walls to climb and one large gap to pass, making us use squid form five times in this short level. Let's put a pin in that is next, and for this level we need to dodge some rolling bowling balls. We also have to climb up some walls, and since they're so spread out, we would normally need to use two squids for this one short section. Thankfully, we can complete it with only one, since our splat bombs can barely reach the wall, making us able to climb it. We can do this one more time towards the end, making this level require three squid transformations. Splash the block parties up next, and we had to climb up two of these walls at the very start of this level. The ending wasn't very difficult. Four squids. Charge now, splat later is next, and we have to swim through these grates at the very start of the level. They make it seem like we have to use these boost panels during this section, but we can barely shoot these octo snipers to get past. The final section requires us to defeat some enemies and then use this ink rail to reach the top section of this tower. After that, we can defeat some more enemies and then perform this jump that I had a difficult time on for some reason. Two squids. Flying Worst class is our next level, and we have to immediately use squid form to climb this wall right on top of this octo missile and use this boost panel. After that, we'll need to use two more squids to climb up this area and hop on some more octo missiles. Once you reach the missile's destination, you can throw a burst bomb over this wall to activate a switch and reach the end using two more squids. Five squids in total were needed. Stamp Amount was our final level for Section 4 of Alterna, and this level was really fun to play through since I could just wait for these doors to open up so I can splat some fuzzy octarians. We had to use one squid to climb up this wall, and then another one to climb up these walls. The rest of the level can be completed pretty easily after that. Section 5 of Alterna is up next, and last video we completed the levels Zipping Over the Neighborhood, Simply Ziptastic, and A Compulsive Collector's Paradise. Our first level for this section was Trouble Round Every Corner, and this level wasn't very difficult to get through, but it does require a squid transformation near the end of the level. The Upside to Enemy Backsides is up next, and for this level they actually give us quite a few slopes that we can climb up to progress. They do give us some walls, but we can easily ink them both. They give us a similar situation near the end, making this level require two squids. Squids. Oh, I'm going to pause the video right here because I just found out while I was editing this video that you could actually use your splashdown to gain momentum with these octo stamps. The first wall doesn't allow octo stamps through for whatever reason, but the second wall does allow us to climb it with the help of these octo stamps. 
one squid. Uh oh, Too Many Snipers is up next, and we have to ink around this entire structure so we can use squid form once to climb all the way up to the second story of this structure. We will also need to throw a splat bomb at this wall so we can climb it using our second squid. The rest of this level didn't have any walls. Barriers, they've got you covered was our next level, and it only requires one squid. Pausing again? It does not. Most of the platforming can be done with the help of these propellers. One way ride to Target Town was our next level, and last time I played this level we ran into quite the obstacle. Greats. These things are terrible for this type of level, so we were required to use two squids. Making waves with splashdowns is up next, and I honestly did not think we would have to use squid form here, but I was quickly proven wrong. Two squids. Low Viz High Risk is our next level, and it starts off with some walls. Shortly after, they show us some more walls, but for these, we could actually climb over them and pass through some grates while only using one squid. We unfortunately have to climb another wall right after, making this level require three squids. Shooter on Rails was next on the list, and let's just say it was not going to show us much mercy. One grate, two grate, but it's jumpable. Three and four grates that aren't jumpable. And finally, the fifth grate, which also isn't jumpable. Three squids were needed. You'll go far if you ink far was our next level, and we had to climb up a wall at the very start. We also have to bring this explosher around this entire level, which means we aren't going to have a very fun time with conserving our ink. Another wall has approached us, and another wall was caught walking towards our path, and one final wall for the road, bringing us to four squids required to complete this level. Learn to reflect in this one's in the bank was our final level for section 5. All we had to do was hit some advanced bank shots, and then fight some enemies at the end of the level. Zero squids. Now we're on to our last section of Alterna. And last video we completed the levels Conserve Ink Splat Sustainability and Enter the Stamp Gauntlet. Our first level for this section was called Bet You Missed Us, and it's an Octoling level with mist. And to actually get into the level, we will of course need to use Squid Form. You can walk through most of the level afterwards, but there is one wall that you'll need to climb towards the end. Two squids were needed. Octarian Heights was our next level, and for this one we're going to have to ink this spire to the best of our ability. After it has been inked, we can Squid Surf up this wall to get past these Octarians. There are some more walls at the end, but we can climb both of them with one more squid. Torture Tour is up next, and all we really have to do is collect some keys, which we can easily just walk into. Zero squids. The enemy ink is lava with our next level, and for this one we're unable to step into the enemy ink. This isn't a difficult level, but we do have to use squid form four times, since there seems to be quite the abundance of walls today. Keep it rolling was super easy, but it does require this boost panel. They also have this convenient bounce pad that makes this level possible with only one squid. Breathe In, Breathe Out was up next, and this level was kind of tricky since we had to time some of our jumps to reach higher portions of the level. This level only requires one squid since we can easily hit the sides of all the walls with our tri-stringer. Dive and Dash is up next, and this is a speedrunning level. Unfortunately for us, we're a little bit too slow for the timer, so we're going to have to use squid form one time to get past the first section, a second time to climb this wall, and a third time to use these boots panels. Also, I'm pretty sure that the timer had nothing to do with this counter, by the way. I'm pausing again right here just to show you guys that you could actually throw some burst bombs up here to completely skip the third squid transformation. Mission Fly Fishin' was our next level, and for this one we're provided with the inkjet, which means we probably won't need to use squid form at all. Okay, never mind, we had to go through two grates during this level. Near the end of this level, we'll need to use this launch pad, but there's a slight problem that I never thought we would ever have. The launch pad on the floor is kind of too low for us, so we're going to need to use squid form to use this launch pad, which is really weird to say. And also, three squids in an inkjet level does not not sit very well with me, I won't lie. Don't Tease with the Keys is up next, and for this level, all we have to do is chase some tentacooks that are carrying keys, and the key part wasn't that difficult, but actually using the keys does require some squid transformations. We can at least minimize it to two, since a splat bomb throw can easily activate this ink rail, but there is another ink rail at the end of the level which is too far for us to ink. This sinking feeling requires a whopping 12 squid transformations. I do not think I have ever seen a level that requires us to climb up so many walls in such little time. Right now, we're at a total of 122 squids required to beat every level in the game. But as you may know, there just so happens to be one more level we have to complete to truly 100% Splatoon 3. After Alterna. 
This level is supposed to be the most difficult challenge we have faced so far, but the first section doesn't really put up much of a fight, so maybe this will be slightly promising. To reach our second area, we'll need to use squid form to leap all the way over to this platform and climb this wall. After that, we'll need to do some more parkour that is way more difficult than it should be. We'll also need to perform this jump that I thought was impossible for about 20 minutes. We could also get to our next area by jumping on these boxes, which I thought was really convenient. But right after we'll have to climb up two walls back to back. One of these requires us to use Squid Surge a few times. We also have to climb up three more walls after climbing up these two. Guys, you'll never guess what we have to do next. Okay, I'm partly serious this time. You could actually ink one of the walls ahead of us so we can use one squid instead of two. After this, we can get to this section that has some ink rails. I feel like we might be able to activate the second ink rail before we use the first one, but I was unable to do so unfortunately. After that, we can jump down these spinning blocks to just barely reach the final part of the introduction of this level. Yeah, that's right, introduction. There just so happens to be four large chunks in this level, but this this is the very first one. As you can see, I'm inking these moving blocks. I'm trying to give myself a road to swim on since the water below us will not remove any of the ink for whatever reason, meaning we can get to the final part of this area with one, uh, um, with two squids. Yeah. So far, we're at 11 squids for this one level. This isn't looking so good for us. The second area of this level has some ride rails and balloons. I thought this was going to be difficult since we can't really reload our ink so easily, but all we really had to do was just have good aim and remember how much ink we can carry so I won't run out. Now we're on to section 3 of this level, and I don't really like the looks of this very much. The very start of this area requires two squids because we'll need to climb up both of these spaced out blocks. The next section also requires two squids because we need to jump on this soaker blocks platform and then climb up a wall. The section after that asks for three squids this time. One to land on the platform, one to climb up this wall, and another to climb up this second wall. After that, we can pop some balloons to create this really long soaker block path. I decided to swim through this entire path and skip some of the enemies, but at the end of the road, we did have to get out of our ink to defeat some of these enemies and create yet another wall with soaker blocks. This next area begins with us needing to jump on some more soaker blocks, but this time we could actually jump to it without using a squid. And if we're fast enough, we can make it to the next area without using squid form at all, since you could chase these soaker blocks and get a huge boost. After that, we can use squid form to reach the top of these soaker blocks and travel on top of these octo missiles to reach the final section. The end of the octo missile road requires one more squid so we can climb up this soaker block wall. Area 4 of After Alterna. This is going to bring back some memories of how Girl Power Station treated me in the Octo Expansion videos. I know for a fact that this was going to be possible, but I also knew that it was going to be quite the grind. The first thing I would do during my attempts would be to camp the right side of my middle platform because the Octobrush user will go towards there 100% of the time. After defeating the Octobrush, there will always be a blaster that would be really annoying if we didn't splat them right here. After splatting the blaster, I would look behind me once again because an Octoling with dualies would spawn in, which is also not a great weapon to be against. After taking out the difficult Octolings, we can move on to the next wave of Octolings pretty easily. I usually decide to camp towards the front of my middle area to take out one Octoling with my hero shot and another one with my splashdown. After that, I would try to camp at the high ground and wait for the other Octolings to come to me. I started losing ink pretty fast, so I used my splashdown on this dually and splatted an Octobrush right after. I started to go on autopilot mode shortly after, and I kept splatting Octolings left and right. They also started using special moves, but that didn't stop me. I saw there is only 3 Octolings left, so I tried to take them out with the Inkjet Special, and I managed to defeat 2 of them, which left 1 more Octoling. I was still holding on strong to my armor, so I was pretty confident in defeating this final Octoling, grabbing the goal, and finishing our final level. But this isn't completely over yet. Let's see how many squids we can shave off from our last video. You can save a squid transformation on the third level featured in the crater by squid surging up this wall, grabbing this key, going over to this area to grab our second key, opening these locked boxes, and then finishing the level. We can also save five more squids at the very end of the game, since we can squid roll up this red pipe after completing section one of the Alterna Space Center. After reaching this top section, we can jump on these boxes and then take a huge leap of faith over to this platform. 
armor. The wall next to it has no collision, so we can phase right through it and jump all the way down to this area to reach the fourth part of the space center, completely skipping parts 2 and 3. This also doesn't take away our 100% completion, since we technically only need to defeat the boss to fully complete the Alterna space center. There is also a neat trick you can try out before you go into the rocket section called menu storage. If you're in a level and pause the game, you can cancel out the start over button after pressing it and you'll be able to use the menu again and press the back to alterna button instead. This will make you start over but now you have a one time pass to skip any area of the rocket sequence even though we normally don't get the skip option unless we've finished the game. We can now make the decision of whether we skip section 1, 4, or the first phase of the Mr. Grizz boss fight. I decided to go with section 1 since it requires 4 squids, which is the most out of all the other sections. This means that our final score for beating Splatoon 3 is 19, and our final score for 100% completion is 134. And with that, we have finished Splatoon 3 with the minimum amount of squid transformations. If you had fun watching this challenge, you should probably subscribe since I make quite a few videos just like this one. If I missed something or if you have a suggestion for a future video, comment down below. Anyways, that's all I got.